विज्ञान में Let's paint some shit. Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'm gonna be taking you guys through the paintwork on this old GT350 Mustang. So obviously all the repairs, prep work and masking are already done. I've masked up the stripes and now I'm ready to put the black down. So on this car, look, it's just a bit of a tidy up really. Uh, there was flaking paint just around these quarter panels where you see the primer patches and where I was just tack ragging there. Really bad flaking and cracking paint under there. So the panel beater guy just uh, ground it right back, did some filler repairs. We then got it into the paint shop, primed it up and it actually ended up sitting for probably a week and a half before I got around to painting it because most of the time we just do insurance work and just pump them out sort of semi production shop type thing but uh, those full production shops you wouldn't really be doing your own prep work and or your own color matching I think uh, a lot of those kind of shops are just like sausage factories where you just go in paint cars paint cars or you prep cars all day which to me sounds boring as batshit I don't mind doing a little bit of prep work I don't mind doing my own masking and color matching I think that uh, you're more uh, valuable as a tradesman if you have uh, more experience in all aspects of the trade. Uh, yes, okay, I don't like polishing, but I still know how to do it. I don't really like cutting runs out, but I don't like repainting panels because I can't cut the runs out. So, um, yeah, I, that's my take on it anyway. There's uh, probably some painters out there that like just going in and getting to paint things all day, every day, but yeah, not me personally. And as far as this shop goes, I do like this shop because it's got a good mixture of work. You know, we still get to paint these old classics, but most of the time I'm able to just jump on those smash jobs, pump them out, we get some nice quality cars come in, we get a good mixture, you know, we still get the old dungers sometimes. It's just insurance work, you get, you've got to take the good with the bad, but the company does have a good reputation and a good name in the industry, so the, uh, the top class cars still do come in. Uh, and as far as Moses goes, it's good that they're not all like that, you know, we still get those Corollas and the Hyundais and stuff like that, where he can actually uh, get a bit of booth time and get the experience in the booth as well. So I think it's a good shop to work at, I'm happy. Uh, good hours and uh, yeah it's all good so I'm using Standock solvent based base coat um, just straight black that was actually a straight tinter so it was 571 is the tinter name I then just thinned it down around a 2 to 1 ratio most of the time I just do it by eye I just put thinners in there until it looks right on the stick and then start spraying and that's with most of my uh, base coats metallics or anything I don't actually thin it down to a specific 2 to 1 ratio I mean I'm sure I'm very close to it but Sometimes I like to leave it a little bit thick, sometimes I thin it down. So for this one, I thinned it down a little bit more than what I usually do because I know that I've got good coverage. Uh, sometimes with the standoff silvers and golds and stuff like that, uh, they have quite a lot of uh, clear base in them or binder or whatever. So I do um, end up leaving them a little bit thick and sometimes put a ground coat down as well. So I did skip out most of the footage of the uh, base coat for this because I know you guys all just want to see me laying down that clear. But as for the gun settings I've been using for base coat and the gun itself, I'm using the GTI Pro T20 air cap is on it with a 1.3mm fluid tip. And I've been spraying my base coats at around 1.5 bar which is around 21-22 psi. I just find it's not necessary to use that uh, higher pressure like I do with my clear. Um, you just end up going through too much paint and you don't really seem to gain much by using that extra uh, pressure for base coats anyway. I've obviously gone around unmasked it all and then I did end up giving those centre sections where the stripes go a bit of a tack rag. So it turns out there was only the one spot that I ended up having to spray the gold um, and I was able to keep away from most of those stripes as far as the uh, gold goes. So that saved me a bit of time in masking and stuffing around having to uh, put the gold on. So clear coat in the Nebula 1.2mm T110 air cap. And I have found that this is my go-to cap nowadays for flat glassy clear because I looked at the rest of this car and it's obviously been 
flattened off so they've painted it and then uh, sanded it back entirely and buffed it up so I thought you know what I'm going to try and save myself a little bit of polishing and get it as flat as I can off the gun and it'll leave me less orange peel to sort of sand out before I do get that flat finish that's on the rest of the car. Unfortunately as it turns out there's a few bits of silicon holes opening up or fish eyes opening up in the clear coat and it ended up being mainly on the centre stripe section so where I've got my black base coat it didn't really seem too bad but I had a few opening up down those stripes for whatever reason it be. Uh, I think possibly the wax and grease remover is the culprit. Now, we are using a cheaper wax and grease remover where I'm working here at the moment. It's something that I ended up uh, saying to the boss, you know what, we really need to get a good quality one. Even if it's just for a final uh, wipe down, we can use the cheaper stuff out in the workshop for removing stickers and stuff like that. But we really do need a good quality wax and grease remover for a final clean down in the booth and this is uh, why, this is exactly why. Uh, as it turns out, I've got a bit of experience with wax and uh, silicon opening up in my paintwork, so I know how to work around it. I didn't panic or anything, just put your first coat on, I let that flash off for a little bit and then sort of dusted a coat on uh, and then absolutely smashed the, the coat after that on and yeah it did end up turning out quite fine in the end so end results are what we're looking for at the end of the day isn't it doesn't matter how you got there as long as you're able to get some consistent results and nice finishes that's the thing that really matters isn't it uh, another reason I think could be possibility of why we got some wax is that you see around these window openings there Supposedly they tell me that there was two sort of options with these uh, Mustangs and one of them was just like a solid uh, quarter glass windscreen there and the other one was a wind up win window that went in there and the owner decided that he wanted to upgrade to the wind up windows so after the car had actually been primed up it had sat there for a week or so the panel beater ended up having to come in and cut some sections out and then he was spraying some CRC or oil basically uh, all around that opening and there was oil and stuff all over the car and just that uh, cheap wax and grease remover as I say, I used it a few times, I, I wiped it down uh, before I even prepped it and then again and again and it just really wasn't cutting it you know so um, that's why I do recommend getting a good quality wax and grease remover for your final clean. Um, yeah, I've only really just started back here and when I used to work here we, were always, we had like in the corner of the booth I had the, the proper standox cleaner there and um, I've sort of just came back so I don't want to start ordering too much but um, I did plead my case to the boss and he said nah that's fair enough we, we're happy to get that in for you. So as I said earlier I've got the 1.2mm on for the first coat of clear and the second coat I ended up finding that it was just uh, sort of slowing me down a little bit and it was uh, not getting quite enough paint on with the 1.2 uh, but it turned out in my favor because the first coat is very tight like a nice tight coat it's not wet it's not sort of really orange peel it's got a, it's a very fine peel to it um, but then for the second coat I just needed to smash it on because as I said I had those few bits of silicon I had a few bits of shit that I wanted to fill up as well um, I'm actually just using the Duke Zone uh, Plus 2K Clear, so it's a medium solid clear, so I wouldn't say it's one of the best clears on the market, but I can still make it work. I can still get some really nice results with it. A few people have said that it's a bit of a prick to polish, and yes, it is a bit of a prick to polish. There's also sort of a limit, well, there's a limit to any clear how hard you can go with it. Um, I know that limit, I've pushed it beyond its boundaries, um, and you, yeah, if you go too heavy with it, it will solvent pop on you and um, yeah you'll get a bit of die back but I was able to get right up to that limit without having it die right back I came in on the Monday morning and uh, even said to the boss I said wow that's actually kept quite a nice uh, gloss level considering how flat it is uh, so using the medium hardener so not fast hardener on a job like this uh, that's obviously advantageous too it's going to help a little bit with the flow but I have found that this uh, Duke Zone Clear doesn't really seem to flow that much and uh, where I was working previously, I was using the 3760S, which is the uh, Chromax VOC clear, which to me is right up there with one of the best clears. I uh, wouldn't say it is the best clear. I did like the CC 6400 a little bit better, but um, yeah, it took me a couple of jobs to sort of adjust coming back to this uh, Duke Zone clear, and it was just because it wasn't flowing as much, you know. Um, basically, you put it on and it'll stay like that, you know, so you've just got to smash it on and it, it should uh, stay like that. I mean, obviously, there's a limit to it. You go too hard, it's going to run. 
um, but yeah it's all good so you can see that even on that fender there we're just painting half of it um, as I did mention before the owner of this car is a friend of the bosses and I think he's just trying to keep the cost down for him look it's far from a restoration job it's just a bit of a patch up for him there was uh, yeah that really bad peeling paint around those quarter panels a couple of dents here and there that we fixed up and his car's looking a million dollars again so that's just about wraps it up for the first coat of clear. I've got to go and run over that boot lid quickly and uh, the center stripes again. So that's, remember I said that I dusted a coat on before I came back. I'm just feeling to make sure it has tacked off. And then I'm just about to just put a dust coat on. That will help with some of that silicon. And uh, I gave it a good 10 minutes because we've got a medium hardener. Went out, mixed some more clear up, changed the uh, fluid tip over, as I mentioned before, to the 1.3 and um, came back in and then just uh, smashed another coat on. I'm going to put some music on for the second coat of clear. Hope you guys enjoy. I'm interested on your feedback. Uh, if you guys prefer just the booth noise or if you do like the uh, music in the background, I've got onto some uh, uh, new music lately and I think it's a little bit better than the music I had previously. No copyright sounds. Uh, they're actually quite a big YouTube channel. They've got some cool music on there. So feedback on that, like any of the rest of my videos, is always welcome, good or bad. I'm not really too worried. I'm pretty thick-skinned these days. If anything gets too nasty, you'll just get deleted and blocked. I've decided that this is going to be the only video I'll be uploading onto my main channel, but if you would like to see more videos, then check out my Raw channel. I've actually been doing a bit of an upgrade over there, doing lots more videos and sort of a bit more editing on them. But yeah, putting some music in, doing a few text layers, so just upgrading that Raw channel to something that's a bit more viewable. And uh, yeah, the feedback has been great so far. It's easier for me, the videos are easier to make, but you guys still get lots of uh, painting footage. So I've been doing some videos where I literally just leave the camera rolling for half an hour or even longer while I'll do a job so you get to see absolutely everything I do. Obviously you've got the first person point of view footage. So yeah, it's been good. I've been enjoying it and yeah, feedback is good. So continue to watch my main channel that won't be going anywhere but gunman raw has had a bit of a revamp lately but for now just sit back watch me lay that coat of glass down on this beautiful old mustang and see you guys at the end
So I did mention earlier in the video that it held a nice gloss. I didn't actually end up baking it. I left it over the weekend. So I painted it on the Saturday, as I mentioned before. And this was Monday morning when I came in. So I was pretty happy with how it came up off the gun. I'm going to finish the video off with a bit more of the polishing stage. Again, there's just going to be music on in the background. I put some uh, text layers up on screen to let you know the products that I'm using. Hope you guys enjoy and hang around to the end and see the car as it sits at the moment. Thank you. 
So this is a car after spending, well, at least half a day behind the buff and I gave the entire thing a good cut and polish. So I cut and polished up the rest of the paintwork so it's looking all nice and shiny. What a beautiful daily driver and as I said before, I think it's great that the owner does actually take it out every day and drive it around. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. As I said, if you're interested in watching more videos, jump over to my RAW channel. Otherwise, check out a couple of these uh, favorite videos at the end. You've got spray painting for beginners and primer work for beginners. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit.
Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye. Wow.